Welcome, my boys and girls. Until now, jailbreaking iOS 12.4.4 using Windows has been virtually impossible. Why? Let me go through the old method. The old method required you to boot into Xubuntu, which some people had problems with. Then the next part, you had to have a beefy computer, which had Intel virtualization. Then you had to install macOS. Then you had to pray all the drivers worked. It was extremely complex. It wasn't meant for the beginner user who just wants to jailbreak nice and easily. However, this brand new method works on all computers that don't meet these two requirements. First of all, you need a USB flash drive. I don't know why I'm holding this up, but a USB flash drive or SD card with 16 gigabytes or higher storage. If you don't, go to your shop and buy one right now. They cost like five pounds. Go on Amazon. Really, you should have one. Ask your family members. But next, your Windows computer has to have a 64-bit architecture. Any computer built in the last seven years will have a guaranteed 64-bit architecture. Any computer built eight years and older, there's probably a 50% chance. So make sure your computer is using 64-bit operating system. That should be 99% of you watching this video. Now, let's get started with the Check Rain Windows tutorial. I'm so excited if you can't tell. Now, on the computer, we'll need some links. However, before we download anything, we must make sure we are compatible with Rainstorm. So we're going to open up the file manager. We're going to right click on this PC and we're going to click on properties. Now you can see here, so memory, unimportant, but system type 64-bit operating system, x64 based processor. The important part is at the right, x64 based processor. If you do not have a 64-bit processor, this will not work. Your computer probably won't support CheckRain official release either. That's your problem. You're going to have to get a new Windows computer or wait for Uncover. If we are supported, let's use the links. First link will bring you to this tool. We're going to see it download for Windows. We click on this and it should download right here. Next one will be Rain USB, Intel and AMD. So if we go back to the properties page, you will be able to see Intel Core. If it says Intel, you want to download the Intel version right here. However, if it says AMD, you download the AMD version. So you can see here where the download button is, you click on download, then you click on direct download, and you'll see the download will start right here. If it asks you to make an account, just click on continue to download, and the download will start. It's only 800 megabytes, which is compared to Rainstorm, which probably downloaded over 12 gigabyte in total, so it's a lot smaller. I've already downloaded the files we need, so I'm just gonna Brexit them. So once the Balena downloader has you know, finished, you wanna run it and you have this application on your home screen once the download has completed. Once you've opened up this application, get your USB flash drive and just plug it in to the computer, okay? Now um, it says you need to format the disk. Do not worry about that. That's what happens after you do this process. So we're gonna click on select image. And now go to the desktop, and you want to find the right Rain USB. Mine is Intel, so we find here Rain USB Intel. We double click on this, then we click on Select Target, and you can see it. This is my USB flash drive. This is my external hard drive. If we flash Rain USB to the wrong flash drive, then that's going to cause a lot of problems. I want this one, so I click on the tick, and I click on Continue. Then you just click on Flash. However, I've already done this process, so I'm going to skip it. This will take 20 to 30 minutes. However, here's the thing. Once the process is completed, you will see a pop-up that hopefully will come up any second now. You see it, you need to format the disk I before you can use it. Just ignore this, click on cancel. Now keep this in mind. Because the jailbreak is semi-tethered, every time you restart your iPhone, you will need to re-jailbreak your computer. Once your flash drive has Rain USB on it, you never need to repeat this process again. However, the next process is for restarting your computer and jailbreaking with CheckRain. You need to repeat every time your computer restarts. If you don't, then the jailbreak isn't going to work. So make sure you do not reformat your USB flash drive. You will need it every time you want to jailbreak with CheckRain. So we're done with the Windows computer. We're going to boot into our USB flash drive. Then we're going to jailbreak. So I'm going to show you what to do next once you restart the computer like so. Alright, 
Now our computer's off, you can see the monitor has detected no signal, and now the monitor's off. So first step, turn on your computer, laptop or desktop, doesn't matter. Now, here's the thing, when the computer turns on, it will say, either press F2 to enter BIOS, it will say a command key. So we're just going to wait until the monitor recognises that the thing's on. Now for me, it says enter password. This is a password I've set on my computer, so I'm just going to enable that. It's four ones, by the way. Now you see it says, please press delete or F2, and you have to press that. Okay, you can see it, I am pressing F2, and it should bring us to the BIOS. This is, it says, overclocking failed. So now it says press F1. So we're going to press F1. And again, your computer will have different keys you need to press. Also, you might have an FN key. You might have to press FN and F2 and just spam those two keys if BIOS isn't loading up. All right, so now we are in the BIOS. For you, this will look a lot different. It might look the exact same. It's because I have an ASUS motherboard. That's why everything is looking different. So here's what we're going to do. First of all, um, we're going to see here, advanced mode. You might not see advanced mode, you might have it already loaded. Essentially, when I click on this, you should see here a bunch of options. Main and some other familiar settings. We need to go, while the user interface might be different for you, just find the settings I show in this video. You can always watch other YouTube tutorials if you're struggling. So what we're going to do is we're going to have to click on boot here. Or you want to find the boot options on your BIOS. Mine is literally right here. Yours might be in the sum menu. It could be a main. And then you might have a boot option right here. I'm not sure because everyone's BIOS will be different. So first of all, fast boot. Make sure this is disabled. If you have no option for fast boot or any other BIOS option, I explain in this video, then you can just ignore it. However, if fast boot is on your computer, it must be disabled. Next, we're going to scroll down, and you see here, secure boot. We're going to make sure this is disabled. For me, I cannot disable secure boot, so I'm going to show you a circumvention that I've done. So where it says OS type, I've changed this to other OS. Only change this to other OS if secure boot cannot be turned off. If secure boot can be turned off, then you can leave this as normal. Normal is Windows UBFI mode. Now we're going to go back, and we want to find CSM. And here we go, we can see here, launch CSM must be enabled. Now, if you do not see CSM, then make sure you find these boot options right here. Boot device control, boot from network devices, boot from storage devices, boot from PCIe slash PSI expansion devices. The important one here is boot from storage devices is set as UEFI driver first. Okay, if it isn't set like this, you must change this. Once this is done, we're going to go back to the main hub of my BIOS. Then you want to save your changes. Okay, so we're going to click on save and exit. Because I haven't actually made any changes technically, I'm going to move to the next step. So after you've saved your changes, go back into the BIOS and you want to find the boot menu, which isn't loading for some reason. There we go, boot menu. Now we're going to change this to our USB flash drive. Now here's the thing. If your USB flash drive isn't showing up, restart the computer until it shows up or disconnect your USB devices. That's what I've done personally because the first time wasn't showing up. Now, here's the thing. If your BIOS has two options, UEFI, SanDisk, or just normal SanDisk, SanDisk is the name of my USB flash drive. If you have another flash drive, this will be called something else. But always make sure you select the UEFI version if you have an option. If you don't have an option, then just choose the normal one right here. But we're just going to click on our USB flash drive. So I'm going to click on this. And now we should be brought to here. You can see here this website, jb.com. So we can see here we have boot Mac OS. But before we do this, you want to click on the right key. Okay. And click on the right key until you have the option which says options right here. So we're going to click on enter. And now you see here a boot ARGS. Dash V, all that good stuff. You want to click on enter. And now delete all this text, like so. Then click on enter again. Then you can scroll down. Quickly, every single time you boot into this USB flash drive, you have to do this option right here. You have to delete all that text, and then you have to do the next thing. 
So we're going to go to graphics injector and we're going to make sure everything here is disabled. So if this was enabled, you'd click on the enter key and it would disable. So we're going to click on return and we'll click on return. I say click, but you just press the enter key. Your mouse will not work. All right. Now you want to click enter on boot Mac OS installation from rain USB. We click on enter. And it's going to say this. We're just going to be patient. Let's just click on enter. And essentially, macOS will start loading. So you can see here we have a verbose boot. And this will take a couple of minutes. It might take up to 10 minutes as you are booting off of a flash drive. And USB flash drives are going to be slower than solid state and, you know, hard disk. So I'm just going to be patient. Now we see the Apple logo. You don't need to do anything until you see your mouse on the display. So can I focus this? Yes, I can. Very cool. Now we are in the setup page for macOS, but quickly you do not install macOS. Thanks to this mod, you can literally install CheckRain from the setup page. This means there's absolutely no risk of your computer, you know, just not installing macOS. Then you lose all of your data. You don't need internet connection to use CheckRain. Literally, the flash drive has all the files you possibly need. This just loads you into a sandbox environment where you can run CheckRain. This can do nothing else. So language, you just click on this and it will hang when you click on that for the first time. So if we click on it multiple times, there we go. We are now brought to this page. Now you can see <laughs> Mac OS and as the CheckRain logo. So we're going to click on continue. Now we have the Mac OS installer. So you can see it does have the instructions right here. But if you don't know how to follow them, click on utilities, click on terminal. And then in the terminal, this is cap sensitive, so make sure caps lock is disabled. You type in rain USB, like so. Then you're going to click on enter. And check rain application will load up on your Windows computer. This is actually the best. So now we need to jailbreak our device. So now, to jailbreak our device, here's what we're going to do. So we're going to get our, you know, A8 or A7 device, doesn't really matter. That's running iOS 12.4.4 up to iOS 12.4. Now, here's what you want to do. So you're going to see here, when I plug in my device on CheckRain on my Windows, it should be recognized. Hopefully, should be recognized. And it, oh yeah, can you see it? iPhone 6, iOS 12.4.4, connected in normal mode. So if you're running 12.4.4 and below, actually, all we need to do is we can just click on Start. And we're going to click on Next. And now it's going to put your device into recovery mode. All right. So my lovely face right here. And this will take, you know, up to a minute, but it doesn't take that long. So any second now we should have the recovery mode page. One, two, three, two, one. This iPhone 6 is so slow, man. But it seems like recovery mode has failed because honestly, recovery mode never takes this long. So assuming recovery mode has failed, Yep, recovery mode has failed. I'm going to show you what you want to do. So I'm going to leave this iPhone like here. And so we are stuck here. So we're going to click on the X. And then we're just going to type in the same command. So rain USB. Click on enter. And check rain will load up again. Now I'm going to like zoom out like here. I'm going to enable verbo boot because it looks cool. This doesn't do anything. It just shows you when you're booting up your iPhone or the processes. We'll click on start. Next. And this time we should be enabled into recovery mode. If we are not, then I'll show you how to manually enable yourself into recovery mode. But there you go. You see here a charging cable, an iTunes. You might also see a laptop display, but that's up to you. Now we have instructions that we need to follow. This will be different depending on what iPhone you have. However, you click on start. Then you press and hold side and home button together for 4 seconds. Then you release the side button, but keep holding the home button for 10 seconds. So I'm going to mount my uh, tripod on my legs so that we have some stability. And so I'm going to click on start. I just want to follow the instructions. So hold side and home button for four seconds. Then release side button, but keep on holding down the uh, home button. So this shouldn't take too long. There you go. Device enter DFU mode successfully. Now your iPhone will jailbreak. If the jailbreak fails, 
then you need to repeat the jailbreak process. Okay, so if it says minus 22, then just repeat all the steps to jailbreak core device. You know them very well. The jailbreak should work first time, but if it doesn't, then there you go. Because we did get the verbose boot, I'm assuming this will work 100%. But the only way to find out, there you go, you can see it all done. And so that should mean that we should have check crane fully working. So press the home button. And there you go, check crane is fully on our device. Sidia, here's the thing, it won't be on the first time. You need to open up check crane, and then you need to tap on Sidia, and then Sidia will download, and then Sidia will be able to be opened up successfully. So I'll show you, I'm using iPhone 6, iOS 12.4.4, right here. Jeez, this phone, man, so slow. But, there we go, any moment now, we should be in Sidia, and you can see him iPhone 7-2, 12.4.4, 7-2 is a model identifier, if you look up iPhone 7-2, it will come up as iPhone 6, but also, you can see here, that there is no S logo on the back of my phone, and you see it upgrades, I'd recommend you upgrade, however, now it's time to get some jailbreak tweaks, so my related jailbreak tweaks video will be in the description down below, peace out.